The Lord be with you. At that time, John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone bring out demons in your name, and we tried to prevent him because he does not follow us. Jesus replied, Do not prevent him. There is no one who performs a mighty deed in my name who can at the same time speak ill of me. For whoever is not against us is for us. Anyone who gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ, amen, I say to you, will surely not lose his reward. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a great millstone were put around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life maimed than with two hands to go into Gehenna, into the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life crippled than with two feet to be thrown into Gehenna. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Better for you to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into Gehenna, where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the Gospel, Jesus is... Um, pretty insistent that nothing should get in the way of our holiness. Nothing should get between us and heaven. He says no matter what that thing is, whether it's an eye, a foot, or a hand, whatever it might be, nothing needs to get between you and holiness in entering heaven one day. And there's a sense that Jesus is not talking about one big sin that happens once in a lifetime and that's it, but kind of the ones that are part of us, the sins that occur on a more regular basis, if not even on a daily basis, the ones that are harder for us to root out. And if you've struggled with bad habits or with sins, especially sins that happen over and over again, maybe you've come to the sense of, you know, I wouldn't mind giving a hand or a foot or at least a finger or toe if I could be rid of my impatience, get rid of my anger, if this resentment would leave me, if I could finally forgive. Maybe you kind of get to the point where I'd like to, I'd give something up if I could just overcome this bad habit or this sin in my life. Because those things kind of take root and it's very hard for us to let those things go. Whether it's anger or lust or impatience, um, greed, grudges, resentments, whatever it might be, it's hard for us to let those kind of things go. Once we get stuck in a bad habit or a sin, it gets a good hold on us. I mean, it kind of grips us rather tightly and it's hard to let go. And sometimes you get to the point where maybe even lose heart. Tired of fighting it, tired of um, battling thinking that this is the way it's going to be. And it's the same stuff in confession. It's the same New Year's resolutions year after year. Nothing seems to change or to get better in life. Still anger, still have bitterness or vengefulness, selfishness or laziness or lack of self-control when it comes to habits like sex or food or drink or entertainment or shopping. Just more and more of those things. And it's hard to get rid of those. In looking at... Um, working on bad habits, overcoming bad habits and sins in our life, probably best not for us to fixate or to focus on them too much. Sometimes I think they get too much of our time and too much of our attention and our concern. And I'm not saying that we should give in to them. That's not the point at all. But sometimes we think so much about them and we fixate on them so much, it kind of crowds out the rest of our lives. And it can lead to um, discouragement and sometimes making the bad habit even worse. St. John of the, of the Cross, writing about four to five hundred years ago in Spain, talks about, gives two pieces of advice for getting rid of bad habits and some sins in our lives. Father Ron Roheiser, um, a, a priest working in San Antonio, a good spiritual writer, picks up on St. John of the Cross and he, he kind of filters his ideas a little bit. He says, here's two bits of advice for overcoming bad habits and sins in your life. He says, first of all, St. John of the Cross says, cauterize the bad habit by focusing on what is good in your life and growing your virtues to the point where they burn out or choke out or cauterize the bad habit. 
So he says, instead of focusing so much on the bad habit or the sin, focus and grow the virtues in your life, the good things in your life. And as you grow virtue in your life, it n naturally chokes out the bad habit or the sin. So again, you're not focusing directly on the bad habit, focusing on, on what's good. So for example, maybe you find yourself giving in to pettiness and anger. Every time you feel hurt, every time somebody hurts you, feel very petty and very angry at that person. Well, grow a virtue. Maybe you grow generosity in your life. And so that um, you're generous, your big heart grows, and as you practice generosity, eventually there's less and less room in your heart for pettiness and anger. And it's not that you focus on pettiness and anger, you've grown the virtue of generosity. And it's choked out or cauterized, in some sense, the bad habit or the sins of pettiness and anger. Difficult for us to do, and it takes some time to do that as well. But the idea maybe is that as you look at um, the whole yard that is your life, sometimes it's too easy to focus on one or two things you don't like, one or two weeds, and you miss all the beauty that's in the yard as well. And if you can just grow the beautiful things, eventually the weeds are not really noticed. Um, maybe the analogy breaks down because they don't necessarily die on their own, but in your life as you grow virtue, it chokes out and cauterizes bad habits in your life. That's the first piece of advice that comes from St. John of the Cross through Father Ron Roheiser. The second um, piece of advice that St. John of the Cross gives us is this. He says, set the instinct that lies behind the bad habit into a higher love. So behind the bad habit or the sin, there's an instinct or a desire or a need. There's something there that's human. There's a reason for it. And you figure that out, set that instinct or desire or need into a higher love because it's taken the form of some kind of warped or disordered love, which is the bad habit or the sin. And so you find it out by asking yourself, why? Why do I fall into this bad habit? Why am I drawn so frequently to this sin? Why do I feel the need for spite, for lust, to eat or drink to excessively, to buy what I don't need? Why do I feel that? In what is my bad habit or sin rooted? And it takes a little while to figure that out in prayer, right? to figure out what's behind all that. But sometimes the answer surprises you in that what's behind it is really a desire for love in some aspect or some form. That's what's behind it most of the time. Some desire for love or a form of love. And it ends up becoming disordered or warped in taking the form of a bad habit or a sin or a vice. For example, lust or the desire for lust could be rooted in a desire for intimacy. Uh, closeness and a connection with people and with God. And it takes the wrong form. It's a good desire, right? It's a good desire, intimacy, but it's taking the wrong form. And so you need to reset lust in a better, in a better venue, in strengthening relationships and friendships in your life, for example. Um, maybe it's the, um, the, uh, the desire for, um, for uh, um, behind greed, might be a desire for some kind of security or peace in your life, kind of feeling unsure and unstable. Maybe the, behind the desire for laziness is a desire for true rest or not working as much or not being quite as frantic as you are on other days. Maybe behind your anger there's a desire for justice. I'm upset when things are not right in the world or not right and I cry out for justice. Maybe behind resentment there's a desire for reconciliation but also maybe some fear in taking a step toward forgiveness and reconciliation. Maybe behind pettiness, there's a desire for peace in some of your relationships. Maybe behind jealousy of spouse or boyfriend or girlfriend, behind that maybe is a desire for, for love and to be together. And it just takes the form of jealousy, unfortunately. And so look at the root of the sin or the bad habit because maybe it's some aspect of love and a virtue. And so in, instead of um, falling into the bad habit or the sin, you want to set that instinct and desire for something good into a higher form of love. Recognize what's there and then change it a little bit. Change the way that you seek um, security, peace, intimacy, love in your life. Change those. These are um, tasks for us for our whole life, not something that we can do in a week or two. We can't really overcome bad habits and sins quite that quickly, especially 
again, as they're part of our life and they've kind of taken hold in us as well. It's important, I think, that we never lose heart. You know, God is powerful and with our good intentions, with God's grace and the help of other people, we can overcome these things little by little. There's always the hope of that. So don't ever give up the fight. Don't ever give up the battle. Keep asking the Lord for forgiveness and for strength because eventually in the end, you and God will win out. In the meantime, as you look at attacking um, bad habits and sins in your life, do so not so much by focusing directly on them so much. I think sometimes they obscure, they obscure who we are and we end up equating ourselves with a bad habit or a sin and we're not our bad habits or sins. We're so much more than that. Cauterize the bad habit, choke out the bad habit by growing the virtues in your life that you're good at, the things that you do very well. Maybe it's faith or temperance or hope or prayerfulness or generosity or kindness or simplicity of life or patience. Grow the virtues you're good, that you're good at and see how they cauterize and choke out a bad habit or a sin. And then secondly, look at what's behind the, um, the bad habit or the sin in your life. What's the instinct or the need or desire and to set that desire into a higher form of love so that you're no longer meeting that need and that desire and that instinct through a bad habit or sin, but into a higher and a greater form of love in your relationships. We ask always God's help in the, the process of growing in holiness that we too might be single-minded and setting aside all that keeps us from the Lord and being wholeheartedly devoted to growing in faith and holiness in our lives.